Welcome to my next set of episodes of the playthrough. The previous two episodes, number two and three, were recorded together, however, because it ended up as a 30 minutes something, 32, 33 minute episode, I cut it in two pieces. So let's see how long this one takes. Okay. Made it to this place. Let's check. I got a Navarin, Sevastopol, a tanker, and ARs. I sold my aircraft care, which I regret right now, I think. Maybe I can get a new one somewhere. Okay, let's see. I have to refuel. That's an aircraft carrier group. That's a problem. If I know it's there, it's usually static. They remain where they are most of the time. Now, the problem with the aircraft carriers is their planes usually have a range of, I think, was it 2,000 or something kilometers? Maybe it's a bit less. Let, let's be generous with it, let's say, yeah. Now, the way it works in this game, anything they get told by somebody else, they saw me. They send aircraft, send you one strike and hit you. And then they leave you alone for some time. It could be because they're rearming or something else happening. However, if I hit them first, and I take out the aircraft carrier in that group, it doesn't respawn, it's removed from the board from this game. I noticed that in a previous, uh, in a, not a playthrough I'm doing, another save. If you take out the strike group, or a aircraft group, or a missile carrier group, they're gone forever. I actually managed to clean out the map from, from strike groups at some point. It was so obvious because when I went to the radar stations and I wanted to click on strike group data, the button just didn't work, because there was nothing to reveal. So it could be worth the effort to take them out if you can afford the repair cost or the potential other uh, complications it can cause. Okay, so <clears throat> if I get within the radius of that thing and I get seen, which I probably will be, then they're going to send aircraft after me. The Sevastopol can take aircraft attacks to some point. So what should I do first? We get to ESA and get some more ships. Do I have the money for it? Barely. Yeah, it's the best course of actions. Collect more ships and get some intel. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. Do I have a cipher key? Do not. Okay, then I don't care for the message. Okay, what just happened? Thermal signature. Do I still have my radar dish? Is my radar dish still there? Oh, my radar dish is probably gone. Maybe my alien system is dead too. I need to check. Okay, uh... Now my alien is still kind of here. It's reduced. My radar is reduced too because the radar dish is gone. I have to repair it later. Okay, so... I have to rely on the thermal optics. Let's see what direction it's coming from. If it's, a, if it's a weak signal, oh, it's coming from here. It's probably just a ship coming in my direction. I could try an intercept. I'll get a bit closer. It's probably 300 kilometer range or something. Uh, Four, 300, let's see, it's over here. Also, um, I think all the radar systems, alien radar, the, all the sensors, they appear to have twice the range or the normal range when you're flying high in, at eight kilometers altitude. However, when you land, it's basically cut in half. Okay, let's see. Is that a radio signal where you found something? No, it looks like random chatter. Okay, if that guy's coming my direction. I'm going to send out the Navarre and see if I can intercept it. It's fast enough to, to catch it. Oh, that looks like a strike group. Now, the cool feature in this game is if you zoom in, you can actually see how many ships there are. So you see three smoke trails and they're all the same size, which means they're probably small ships. Because if a large formation moves, you can see usually one smoke trail that's larger from the flagship. Yeah, I hope they see that before they see that, because then it's a missile breakfast again for me. So I'm going to go intercept, see what I can do with that. Knights fleeing. Yep. Oh, it's a prize ship. Yeah, that looks like good money. 
if I can survive it. Come on, come on, come on. Ooh. That was a bad hit. Yeah, I took out my guns, dang it. Oh, shit. Yeah, I gotta flee from this situation. Yeah, I need to get some better ships here. I hope he saw me in that area, so he probably doesn't have a <clears throat> sorry, sophisticated radar to find me. Okay, it's time to go to Issa. Actually, wait, I have to repair it, so I can at least shoot in the next mission. What's going on here? Come on. Oh. The lamp perfectly. Hmm. What is going on here? Okay, got three radar strike missiles which we can use. Got enough fuel to go to Isa. What happened to this ship over here? It could have almost destroyed it. Don't have that much time. Hey, the bridge was almost taken off. I could up armor it a bit, like slap some armor on the thing. Yeah, sure enough. Yeah. I don't really need the bombs, I'm not using them much. Pressing exit, so it saves it uh, at the current class. It doesn't actually all write other things, it's just a particular configuration of that particular ship in the game. Which I think if you are, uh, told me in the comments. So thanks about that. I got so used playing with uh, bonuses from other campaigns that I had 80, 100k extra, so I usually just pick the best ships and plow through the map. I know, however, now it's a bit more interesting. Okay, dangerous basically means uh, it will attract strike groups. However, if you took out strike groups in the area, they will take some time to, to get to you. I can repair it a bit more. Yeah, it's missing ammo. Yeah, save the new configuration so it doesn't know that the new configuration needs that ammo. So. Okay, do we have any ammo bags? Over oh, we don't have ammo bags. Oh my god. Yeah, I could take him off the tanker. He should have ammo bags. We have ammo bags on this thing. Come on, give me some ammo bags. High suppression. I have to rip apart my tanker to get ammo from the other ship. Oh my god! <clears throat> Actually, I'm just going to use the Sevastopol and attack uh, the Isa. Screw it. Warning: Radar emission detected. Okay, radar means somebody's looking for me from that direction. I might run into a strike group. Now I could weaken it by killing him. If I take out the ship in the strike group, I don't think it gets replaced. And if I get the flagship, it's basically a lame duck. So I could take out 1K-15P. Buy it approximately in that direction, because that's where it likely he's coming from. Let me see where I am. Oh well, yeah, that, that looks like he's somewhere. Ah, screw it, I'll shoot one. Right over here. See if the radar can find a new friend in that missile. Oh yeah, that's the flagship. Yeah, that's the flagship. <clears throat> I'm going to risk firing two of my missiles, hoping one of them gets through to knock him out so hard that it will give me an upper hand. See, the thing is about missiles and, and airplanes. You need to calculate when to use them, because if you lose them, you lose resources. And 
if you use them well, it can really give you a strategic advantage. Come on, one has to get through. Come on, come on. Shit. Oh, but they're using up the missiles for defense, so maybe I can wear down the defenses now. Come on. Come on, come on, come on, come on. Ah, almost hit. I can take that with my flagship. I don't care. I mean, that is a sorry crew of the fleet. We had a Navarre that can't shoot. We got a useless tanker that has a machine gun on it. And we had an empty gas. Ah, so. I just hope it's that one strike group. Oh yeah, they saw me. Now that means any strike group in the area with missile range is going to shoot at me right now. So the campaign might end if I screw this one up. Oh, uh, here we go. And the good thing about having small useless ships, uh, they eat the rockets that won't hit your sasta more likely. It's probably going to be four of them. Yeah, good hit. Everything we've got, yeah, because there it is. See, he's coming for me. No, no he's running. <laughs> he's actually running. Oh my god. Those three are a problem. Those I can hit with one salvo. And those can just watch because they got nothing to do. And I got, I got one armor piercing salvo. Which I won't use right now. Okay, here we go. I need to aim for the main thrusters on the side to take them out quick. That's okay time for the armor piercing rounds. Okay, this is bad. Oh, it is looking bad. Yeah, that was it. <clears throat> oh, that was a bad fight. I think I also had a bit of bad luck with the KH-15 piece, but didn't hit. If one of them would have hit the flagship, man, it might have made a difference. Oh, I made some strategic mistakes early on. Easy to get out of those. Yeah, 
Yeah, this one is so heavy, I'm gonna abandon this one. Not going to retry, it's going to be as it is. Game over. You know, I can technically restart the game. If I, That's a bit confusing in this game. If you press this button, you basically restart from the last disk thing you landed on with the disk symbol. If you click on main menu, it deletes that save and it's a new game. So be careful what you want to do with that. So what went wrong in this campaign? Um, early on, I had it... I spent a lot of money, 28,000 on my honey badger. And it had a flaw in the armor because if you build diagonal armor, you have to also reinforce the other side if you build it diagonally. So that one hit took it out. Then I sold my aircraft carrier. I had some bad luck with missiles. And the last battle could have gone better, but... Well, yeah. I think for the next playthrough, I need to be a bit more careful in the beginning. So this concludes this particular campaign, and as always, thanks for watching.